This is 268810, Andy, stations by for the northeast net. Go. Golf Tango 01. Right, quite a few stations going through there. Was there a Golf Tango 01? Yeah, Andy, it's Neil. I'm actually portable at the moment, just to the other side of uh, Nairsborough. Alright, oh, you're, you're near Nairsborough, over. Yeah, that's correct, Andy, yeah. I don't want you getting me, like, you're probably not that far away, to be honest. Well, you're making a five and five to me here. Uh, Nesbury's not too far away from me, but yeah, that's absolutely fine. Um, you, you know, no problems at all to me at the moment, um, uh, Neil, over. Yeah, that's great, Andy. Yeah, you're giving me nines here anyway. I should have maybe put something a bit bigger up, but uh, like I say, it's just on the van. It's just a Serio 5000 I'm just testing out. Yeah, I've got you there, round about signal one, signal two. I've just tried another antenna actually, and uh, I'm pulling you in a bit better. I'm also pulling Andy in a bit better as well. Uh, the strange thing is, it's a 10, 20, and a 15 meter antenna, which is bizarre. Yeah, it's Neil, mate. November Echo in India Lima. It's Neil. Yeah, I'm just trying another antenna out there. I just shoved it outside of the van there. It's called a DX Commander Venture. And it's basically a, an amateur radio antenna, three band jobby. But it's for some weird reason, it's resonant on uh, 11 metres. <laughs> so there you go. It's only about 22 foot up and it's just pushed against the van. Hello and welcome back to GT Retro World. Well today I thought I would pop the lids off these two radios and show you the differences between the two. There's not a lot but I thought I would just do it anyway because I've been asked quite a lot of questions. Right, the differences anyway, there's not a lot on top but we'll go through them anyway. This is the Mark 1, this is the Mark 2. You can see there this is etched on both sides underneath those ICs. Why I don't know but on this side you can see it's not. You can see where these little points have been tinned, these haven't. There's a jumper here on the Mark 1, the isn't on the Mark 2. So I have no idea what that jumper's for, to be honest. I will have to check that out. But there is a little jumper at the front. Anyway, we'll come to that another day, maybe. So that's the top. Not a lot, like I say. Oh, and uh, we've got AI board, whatever that means. We haven't got it on the Mark 2. So like I say, Mark 1, Mark 2. So we'll flip these now. Right, OK. Again, Mark 1, Mark 2. You can see there's a difference straight away, the way this is fed for the RF gain and the RF power. Okay, um, you can see it comes back around on itself here from underneath here. The socket is on this side, whereas on the Mark 1, it's on the opposite side. I think they've probably done that to make it a bit more neat on this side, because obviously these two are squashed together. Obviously those could be pulled off quite easily, so it gives it a little bit more space, a little bit more neatness, I suppose. Again, there's little things like on the Mark 1, we have two spots here for a jumper. On the Mark 2, we actually have jumpers. We have jumpers down here. So that's another difference. Both V3 Aquario on the front there, just different numbers, but again, both V3 on these boards. So that's the Mark II, but the same. Uh, another difference, obviously, is this is six pin. This also has a 13.8 out straight to the microphone, and that is live, definitely 13.8, I've checked that. And obviously here we have the four pin. And that's the four pin Mark One. yeah, okay. We also have a 13.8 there as well, so I mean you could power the Mark 1 from here to the microphone, I guess. Um, you probably have to change the microphone cable, but again, it, it's doable, I suppose, if you wanted to. Another difference is the board number there. Can you see there, guys? We've got G10SMTW3SP11, and this is the Mark 1. And over here on the Mark 2, we have 890V1.1. So, there you go. Very slight differences between those two. Okay, on to microphone differences. As you can see, both casings are identical. No difference there whatsoever. Uh, there is a bit of difference inside. Obviously, we've got a 13.8 volt feed. Um, anyway, this is the, the, the microphone PCBs. So this is the Mark II and this is the Mark I. As you can see, both have different PCB numbers. Five pins are wired up. Whereas the side is only four wide up and we have no 13.8 feed. So I'm presuming it's some type of phantom power. Could be wrong, like, but I'm 
fairly certain it is. So that's obviously the underside, and this is the side you see when you open the microphone up. Okay, there, guys. So basically, they're very similar. They're very similar. Uh, these are for a few hardware changes, as you can see there, guys. But um, like I say, probably the biggest things probably firmware more than anything. Um, there's a few little visible little bits and bobs in there, but nothing to write home about. Like I said, probably the biggest one in here is the where is it on this one? The Mark II is the jumpers. Let's have a little look. We actually have jumpers, but they're actually not jumped anywhere. We have uh, it just says jumper and cable, and it says the same on the Mark One, but obviously there's no jumpers or any way of doing it to the PCB. It's just it's. It, it's just um, not there at all whatsoever so yeah you can see a few little bits of differences it's been tied up a little bit inside you can see there guys that wiring to the RF gain and the RF power it's just a bit neat around here isn't it but other than that these two radios are almost identical inside um, like I say I think a big push has been done on the firmware and the, like these hardware differences um, but they're, they're nothing big to write home about. Now there has been a few little problems and the biggest email I've had with this radio is the talkback. Right, the talkback on this radio is absolutely super loud. It's crazy how loud that uh, talkback is. Right, to activate talkback for it to work correctly, just pop it into PA mode, flick your talkback on and it's fine, 110%. You can obviously um, alter the volume uh, from your volume control, so it works fine there. But like I say, in any other mode, your talk back is not fully functional. It could be a daft little bug that might get ironed out eventually, I don't know. But other than that, the radio is performing great. It seems to have had its little niggle sorted out, especially the FM deviation, and that's about it really. There's nothing much to say about it. It's, it's a cheap rig, isn't it? At the end of the day, you can't expect a Yesu type quality or even your president quality, but for 140 quid, it's not a lot of money, is it? And it has had a little bit of work done to it, as you can see there, guys. Mark 2, Mark 1, it's evident it's there, it's had a few little bits done. Anyway guys, hopefully it's been of some use and it's just something just to fill the time really and answer a couple of questions. People have been wanting to see what they like, how they differ both inside and it's not a lot. Like I say, the biggest things are probably that feed, that 13.8 feed to the microphone which I think's giving it a bit of phantom power to that condenser. I could be wrong, but that's the way I'm looking at it anyway. Uh, and obviously a few little firmware changes. There's a couple of little bugs, but there's also more bugs in the Mark 1. I think the talkback, I think we can put up with that by just going into PA. It doesn't take you too long to do. It's seconds, isn't it? Pop it into PA mode and you're away. No problem there whatsoever. But like I say, I've had a lot of emails regarding that talkback and it probably is a bug that wants in and out. So anyway, guys, hopefully it's been some use. Thumbs up for the channel wouldn't go miss and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.